it's not just that they're traitors, Sean. I've gone, you know, a little bit into the spiritual realm, the occult realm, but I think they are possessed by demonic forces. I, I, there's no other explanation for it, Sean. Right. They are demonic. Hey friends, welcome back. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's Sean from SGTReport.com and SGTReport.tv here. I have on the line my good friend, a longtime friend, and old friend, Stefan Verstappen. His website is ChinaStrategies.com, and his 2011 book is what inspired me to get in contact with Stefan and invite him back on. The book is called Defense Against the Psychopath. And that's exactly what we're up against right now, guys. We're surrounded by psychopaths. Stefan, welcome back. Thanks for having me back, Sean. Always a pleasure to talk to you. Well, it's a pleasure to have you on, my friend. Uh, doing a screen share here. So Spain plans a registry for those who refuse the COVID vaccine. Meanwhile, in the UK, if you're a journalist and you point out that only old and sick people are dying from COVID, you get hounded and drummed out of town. It's just madness, Stefan. Look at this headline. California governor warns L.A. lockdown likely to be extended. Spanish COVID deaths top 50,000. Has anybody else noticed that Zero Hedge is as much a fear monger of COVID now as any mainstream media outlet? I don't know what happened to Zero Hedge. It used to be a really reliable tool for alternative news media. It's a little bit like Drudge. It's almost as though they've made a deal with the devil. Stefan, we're surrounded by psychopaths. They want to lock us down. They want to inject us with their poison vaccines. And I don't see how this is going to end unless we, the people, rise up. Um, yeah, um, unfortunately, that's the way it looks, uh, Sean. Um, you know, I, I came out with a video, I think about three years ago. It's called We Are at War. And what I say in the video is that we are in a wartime scenario right now. Just because you don't see soldiers marching down the street shooting civilians, that's coming. But we don't see it yet. But it doesn't mean we're not at war. And it doesn't mean we haven't already taken heavy casualties. Just think of all the suicides. Think of all of the destroyed businesses. Think of the people that have died from drug overdoses and alcoholism and cancer from the 5G and the chemtrails and the, the fluoride in the water and the GMO in the food. And in case you don't get it, folks, I mean, just take a look, do a little bit of research. The powers that be, the evil state, our government and their henchmen, the media, the banks, um, the uh, uh, social um, networks, you know, in case you haven't noticed, they have already told us that their intention is to murder most of us. I mean, it's been out there. They've been telegraphing this for years. And so there is no doubt we are now in a battle. Now, a lot of it is a spiritual battle. It is a spiritual battle between good and evil. We are literally at the end times now. Um, you either stand up to the evil or you will go under. But we are at war. And in my study of history, I have never encountered a single case where a tyranny has been overthrown by peaceful methods. So, you know, and, and in case you think that, you know, we can solve this without bloodshed, think of, you know, the famous Alexander Solzhenitsyn quote, where he writes how we burned in the camps. If only we had waited behind the door with a baseball bat or a shovel or anything we could get our hands on when the secret police knocked on the door and met them with force and violence rather than going along with them to the camps. And if you want to know what happens to you at the camps, well, you don't want to know. But there's a couple of movies that you can watch. They're available on, dare I say it, YouTube if it's still on there. One is Under the Sign of the Scorpion. I think you know that one, Sean. And the other is The Czechist. Now watch those movies. This is what will happen to you. And rather than have that happen to you, I absolutely recommend you using violence to protect yourself. Let's be clear here. You and I want to take back our nation's you're a Canadian, by the way, so people that don't know, you know, you've got your back up against the wall there with the hand of the Queen, Justin Trudeau. Uh, yeah. Here in this country, we're up against it with Sleepy Joe. Okay, They're trying to convince the people that he's the lawfully elected president 
when nothing could be further from the truth. And by the way, Biden COVID advisor is urging more genomic surveillance, saying it's necessary to do that to stop the mutant COVID strains. It's only going to get worse. What we're seeing, the slippery slope into despotism that we're seeing in New Zealand, Australia, Canada, it's coming here, folks, if Joe Biden gets in. And I don't think you're advocating violence, Stefan, nor am I. However, if push comes to shove, if they get violent with us, hey, the only thing a red-blooded man can do is respond in kind, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I have another video called The Pathetic Foolishness of Nonviolence. And the thing is, you know, is we have our ideals. And me personally, I hate violence. I mean, I studied martial arts for a long time. I, I sparred and fought many, many thousands of students, thousands of fellow martial artists. It, but it was in a sporting manner, you know, so uh, nobody got seriously hurt. And I loved it. It was great. But real violence is ugly and horrible. And I have never had to resort to violence in my life. Usually what I do, first of all, I live a life of virtue. I don't get in people's business. I don't enforce my political opinions on people. I don't manipulate or steal or lie or cheat. I, I live a good life. You know, I'm a good person and I do everything I can to avoid violence. And a lot of the times the, the tactics I will use to avoid violence are pure strategic tactics such as evasion and misdirection and uh, disguise and camouflage. Um, <clears throat> I will do just about anything it takes to avoid having to hurt somebody. And not only do I not hurt people, I don't hurt animals either. I'm, I'm the kind of guy, I see a spider in the, in, in the bedroom, I capture him, I take him out to the backyard, I release him. You know, I won't even kill a spider. I don't like to hurt anything. However, we are in a situation now where we might not have a choice but to use violence. And in that case, when you understand what's happening, then you are fully in your moral right to resist with violence. Well, this is a good segue to an email that I received from a viewer. His name is Nathaniel. And uh, when he asked me this question, I immediately thought of you and your book, Defense Against the Psychopath. Let me just read a little bit from this email. So, so Nathaniel wrote me uh, saying that he appreciated the work and enjoyed the most recent video interview with Joanne Howard. And it brought up some questions for him because he really believes in being peaceful, as we all do. And he writes, my dilemma rises from the teachings of God to do no harm. Joanne in the interview mentioned we shouldn't even harm animals. And he does feel bad when he even squashes a mosquito. But he will do anything in his power to protect his son. And he's not going to get on the truck. And I think that's a uh, reference to going to the camps, you know, the yes. Holocaust. You know, we all yes. sort of feel like it's coming. I mean, it could get that bad. You don't take the COVID injection, you get on the truck. He says as he's preparing mentally for this, it's uh, in his mind, it's going to come down to the question of, are you willing to commit violence to protect your family? And uh, he was just wondering if I could get somebody on to talk about this concept. And you're the guy. You're the guy, Stefan. I mean, if push comes to shove, the only way for humanity to survive will be to fight back. Yeah, unfortunately, but true, you know, like I, you know, I have an ideal, you know, I, I like my ideals, I like lofty thoughts, but, you know, the truth is, first of all, nature is cruel. Nature is eat or be eaten. And, you know, like I, I, I love my chipmunk and I, and I love my, my red-tailed hawk, but I don't like it when the red-tailed hawk eats my chipmunk, you know. I, I love my bunny rabbit that's in the backyard, and I don't mind the coyotes, but I don't like it when the coyotes eat the rabbit. But that is nature. That's the way of the world. Now, human beings are tribal animals. You can't escape that. Um, so for all, you know, your best intentions, that you don't want to hurt somebody, that you don't want to resort to violence, well, the alternative is quickly going to be that if you don't resort to violence, you will experience torture and hell on earth. And what we have now is a, uh, a communist takeover of the entire world. 
this is the worst case scenario I, I, I could possibly imagine. And what the communists have done in the past, what they have always done, whatever country, Russia, Cambodia, uh, Red China, uh, Eastern Europe, East Berlin, what the communists have always done is murder millions of people. So unless you fight back, because there's no peaceful solution to this, do you think that going out and, and standing around in, 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 in the street with a sign uh, is going to dissuade the psychopaths that run things? They laugh at you. They think you're an idiot. There's nothing, nothing like that would ever bother them. Do you think signing a petition and, and sending letters to your congressman is going to dissuade them? Absolutely not. They laugh at you. They think you're an idiot. Do you think going to the poll, uh, going, going in and voting again, let's vote in another good guy this time. When has that ever worked? It's never worked. So the only thing these people understand, and I know this from, from personal research and experience, the only thing the psychopaths understand is force. And unless you are willing and able to inflict force and violence on them, nothing will stop them. Yeah, I think that's absolutely right. And, uh, you know, it just occurs to me that, uh, you know, in the case of Gavin Newsom, that tyrant in uh, California who's saying uh, L.A. is going to get the lockdowns extended probably, that guy needs to be recalled. I think there's close to one million signatures on a petition to do just that, to recall him. And uh, that sends a very strong message. So we can still take our nation back peacefully, but we need to start doing it right now. We need to start doing it yesterday. Because even though Luke 10:19 says, Behold, I have given you the authority to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. Well, guess what? A lot of the governors in this country, Stefan, are doing just that. They're hurting people, right? Yeah. Cuomo. Yeah hurting business owners, hurting families by shutting down New York. Gretchen Whitmer doing the same in Michigan. Of course, Gavin Newsom out there in California. These people are hurting their constituents. They're hurting their own citizens. And the only way that makes sense to me, Stefan, is if they have sold out to this communist agenda, if they've sold out to Klaus Schwab's Great Reset. I mean, we know John Kerry has. John Kerry is saying the Great Reset is a fantastic idea because we need to stop Trumpism. We need to stop populism. These people are traitors, are they not? Oh, absolutely. And um, it's not that they're hurting people, Sean. It's way worse than that. They're killing people. How long do you think these bankrupt business owners are going to last living in a cardboard box in winter under an overpass? They've already killed a lot of people with this stuff. The, the, the amount of suicides, the amount of alcoholism and drug overdoses, they've already killed thousands of people, if not tens of thousands of people. And a lot of people are going to die from the actions that they have already committed. It's going to be a slower death, maybe a more drawn out death. But there's a lot of people walking around now that in a, in a month, two months, three months will be dead because of what these people have done. And I disagree with you, Sean. I'm sorry, but... You know, just because we have a thousand signatures on a petition to recall, that's not going to make any difference. Let's say you, you, you get that newsome, gruesome character out of there. Who's going to come in? Well, another psychopath installed by the same satanic, pedophile, monster cabal that installed them all. It's just, they're just going to replace one demon with another. And I think these people, it's not just that they're traitors, Sean. I've gone... You know, a little bit into the, uh, you know, the, the spiritual realm, the occult realm. Um, but I think they are possessed by demonic forces. I, I, there's no other explanation for it, Sean. Right. They are demonic. And they are killing people right now. It's not that they're just hurting them. And the effects, the reverberation effects of what they have done with this complete fraud of a pandemic um, will cause casualties for the next 10 years. So uh, that's why, you know, I, I see these guys walking around on the streets, you know, and they're giving press conferences. And here's the problem. They should be in fear of their lives to show their face in public. Before they walk out of their Capitol building, out of their office, they should be 
wearing bulletproof vest and Kevlar helmet and surrounded by six members of the SWAT team carrying ballistic shields for fear that they will be shot, for fear that there is a dozen guys with hunting rifles on the roof of every building, behind every bush, underneath every car, waiting to get a headshot off on these guys. But they're not afraid of that. We do not have, as a people, the will to inflict violence. And they know that. That's why they can walk around. You know, you see the videos uh, that, uh, you know, other uh, YouTubers have taken and they've tried to interview them. And they're just walking down the street. I, I look at it and I go, where is their security detail? Right. They might have one guy with them. You know, he's probably security. But, I mean, they should be, walk they should be terrified to walk out on the street. Terrified that they are going to be shot at any moment. That would make a difference. But they're not because they know we do not have the will to inflict violence on them. And so they just, you know, they, they, they rub our noses in it. And I know it sounds awful, like, I, like I'm advocating violence. Uh, I'm not advocating violence, but there's a certain aspect to this that people need to understand. And that is you may not have to inflict violence, but you need to be able to, you need to be prepared to inflict violence. It's a mental attitude. And the preparedness to inflict violence sends a very, uh, a very strong message to the predators that they should back down. For example, I'll give you, a, you know, I think I've told this story a couple of times before. Uh, you know, I was sitting in the park by the lake one night, late at night, and uh, all by myself. And I had uh, three thugs wander by, and they tried to intimidate me and, and uh, get me to give them my money and my bicycle and all that. And you know, I just sat back in my in my uh, on the on <clears throat> on the bench, very calmly. I didn't jump up and assume a fighting stance. So I just I was very nonchalant. I, I practically ignored them. When they asked me for my stuff, I said no. That's it. I just said no. Oh wow, they're going to do this to me, and they're going to mess me up, and they're going to you know that's not the word they use, but you know what I mean. Now in my mind, Sean, I wasn't afraid of these guys. In my mind, I was thinking, my greatest concern was, where do I dump their dead bodies? And it's that attitude that made them back off. I was outnumbered three to one. They didn't come anywhere near me because they could sense I was ready to kill them. They knew it. It's a subconscious. It's almost ESP. It's an instinctive thing. If they know that you are prepared you know, to kill them, and they feel it coming from you, they back off. That's the same thing with the people here. We might not have to resort to violence, but we need to be prepared to inflict it if need be. The very fact that um, we are prepared to inflict violence will send a message to the powers that be. But anything short of that, at this stage, Sean, we're too far gone. You know, maybe 30 years ago, we could have stopped this through, you know, nonviolence and and, and voting and petitions and protesting. We are way past that now. Look what they've done. Look what they've done to bastards. Um, nothing is stopping them. They're not letting up. This shutdown nonsense is never going to go away. It's only going to get worse. So at this stage in the game, you know, I know it sounds terrible, but uh, folks, get ready. Prepare yourself mentally and spiritually. Now, for me, like I said, I live a very humble life. I never bother people. I never instigate people. I never, you know, start a fight. Um, so if I have to fight, that means they have crossed the line. And now everybody should have a mental line, what they call a tripwire. It's a line in the sand that if they cross it, you would just go berserker mode. That's it gloves are on. You will kill or be killed. You need to understand what that line in the sand is. And for each of us, it might be different. Maybe you're willing to get on the truck and go to the camp and wait and see how things are at the camp. Me, my line in the sand is when they knock on my door and try to put me in the truck. You know, it's interesting to even have a conversation like this because it's very telling how far gone we all feel things are. I mean, things, the slippery slope into a new world order despot system is happening right before our very eyes. I mean, they tried, they're trying, 
the mainstream media would say they've succeeded in stealing the U.S. election and implanting a person who is wholly corrupt and that nobody would show up for when he held a rally, Joe yeah. Biden. All right, so we can feel this slide into absolute despotism, New World Order globalism, and these people are so immoral. And one of them, one of these chief globalists, is Bill Gates. Are you ready for this? I want you to hear this exchange guys, because Bill Gates was on one of these mainstream media news outlet networks, and he actually got some tough questions because Moderna's vaccine is really harming people. Now, if memory serves, I watched this clip last night. I think it's like 80% of the people that take it are having an adverse reaction. He's pressed on that, and watch him squirm because he wants you to take the vaccine because he loves you so much. No, in fact, he's a eugenicist, just like his father, the former head of Planned Parenthood, Bill Gates' dad. Bill Gates is a eugenicist, and he wants you to take the vaccine. Listen to this exchange. The side effects for the Moderna vaccine sound concerning. We looked. After the second dose, at least 80% of participants experienced a systemic side effect, ranging from severe chills to fevers. 80%, a systemic side effect. Watch this cat try to wiggle out of this one. So, are these vaccines safe? Well, the, uh, the FDA not being pressured will look hard at that. The FDA is the gold standard of regulators, uh, and their current guidance on this, if they stick with that, is, is very, very appropriate. Uh, and, you know, the, it, the, 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 the side effects were not super severe. That is, it didn't cause permanent health problems for uh, the things that are, they, you know, Moderna did have to go with a fairly high dose. And so, uh, you know, to get the... Stefan, look at the look on her face. Yeah, She's not yeah. buying any of this. We'll continue. No. The antibodies, some of the other vaccines uh, are going able to go with lower doses to get... Uh, responses that are are pretty high, including the the J and J and the Pfizer, and so there's a lot of characteristics of these vaccines. Um, it's great that we have multiple of them uh, that but are Bill, going out there. And yes, I you, think you know the data the better than I do. But the bill, bill, the, the data show that everybody with a high dose had a, a side effect. Yeah, but some of that is is not dramatic. Where you know it's just you know, super painful, but yes, there, we need to make sure there's not severe side effects. The FDA, uh, all right. So I guess the question is, and I have my own opinion on this is Bill Gates and his ilk, people like him, these globalists, are these people psychopaths? Oh, they're psychopaths, Sean, make no doubt about it. Psychopaths at best possessed by arc demons you know, would be the next level. I mean, this Bill Gates guy, you know, I used to work in Silicon Valley uh, back in the turn of the century. And um, everybody that's ever met the guy has a horror story to tell. This guy is evil incarnate. And then that he is there in front of the entire world as some sort of expert, a person, a guy without even a college degree in anything, let alone, you know, a uh, 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 medicine and he is telling the world what to do and then oh the fda is the gold standard yeah well because he owns the fda of course it's the gold standard why would you believe anything this man says and the fda and every other government agency remember they're all in on it they're none of them do any good at all it's like you know george carlin says they don't care about you they don't care at all and so not the fda or the cdc or any of these other government and agencies care about you at all they do what they're told they do what their paymasters tell them to do and their paymasters are telling them listen we got to kill off a whole lot of people and a good way to do that is to give them all an injection so that it's not an instant kill but you know a couple of weeks later a couple of months later you know suddenly they get a brain tumor or suddenly they have some you know immune deficiency or, or immune response disease like aids they're, they are out to murder us like, People, let's let's not put, 
you know, pussyfoot around the subject. They are out to kill us. They've told us that in so many words that they want to kill us. It's the Georgia Guidestones. They have been telling us for 20 years or more that that is their plan. Make no mistake about it. So what kind of person wants to kill off 80% of the world? A psychopath, if not some demonic, interstellar, interdimensionally possessed being of, 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 uh, of utter darkness and evil. So, listen, that's why I say, look, you know, we're never supposed to advocate violence. You know, that's the big third rail. That's the big taboo. Oh, we can never advocate violence. No, we can't advocate violence. While they are murdering us, we're supposed to just be nice and polite and say, oh, please stop. Please stop. Don't murder me. Listen, when you read what they do to you once they get a hold of you, the brutality is beyond your comprehension. If I were to tell you some of the stories I've read, people would would lose it. They would lose their minds. It is a horror show. That's what they plan for us. So to just say, oh, you know, I, I, I don't want to be violent. Please don't pull my fingernails out. No, oh, oh, please don't take a chainsaw to my legs. No, you're 100% right. Because if we cower like sheep, then we will be called like sheep. I mean, there yes. comes a point where human beings are programmed to fight back. It's the survival instinct. And, you know, I think when we talk about these people and how satanic they are, one of my all-time sort of fantasies to combat these people is to take an example from that Showtime show, Dexter. Now, I've never watched a full episode of that show, but I know what it's about. It. Dexter's yeah. about a serial killer, but he's a moral serial killer in that he only kills bad people right yeah, so yeah, yeah. He, say he finds a pedophile he captures the pedophile and then kills the pedophile so he's a serial killer but he's just taking out really evil people yeah i've always thought and i've said this before stefan maybe it was to you i've always thought a great premise for a tv show would be if some of these former navy seals and yes. and army rangers Right? A secretive, think, A-team of mm -hmm. hardcore killers could travel around the globe and take out the most evil people on the planet. Yeah. Some of those people rule the planet. Now, I'm not advocating that. I'm just saying it would make a really great TV show. It surprises me that there isn't an A-team of uh, trained killers just taking out the bad guys. I'm surprised, too. I've always said that if, if I had 60 men that have the correct training and the discipline um i could take this i could take everything back it's an interesting question and again we're not advocating violence friends we're just having a conversation because we all know how far gone some of these countries are including the united states which brings me to my final question donald j trump versus the satanic deep state what do you make of what's going on? We're approaching January 6th very quickly here. Uh, I do have renewed hope that things on January 6th may go very well for the president based on an excellent video, a report by Millie Weaver. It's about a 45 or 50 minute report recounting this entire drama of this stolen election and the fact, the quantifiable fact that the president, the White Hats, his team, the Department of Defense, they have it all. I guess it's time to make the case to the American people. And uh, what do you make of what you're seeing, Stefan? Because uh, if Donald Trump stands down to the deep state coup, it's game over for this country, and it may be game over for the world. Well, that's the problem, though. You know, if America goes down, it's game over for the world. Like I've said, my worst case scenario is always communism. You know, as a somebody who's been preparing for the apocalypse since I was 12 years old, I, you know, I'm ready for a zombie apocalypse. I, I would, I would welcome it. Uh, I could handle a, a nuclear, thermonuclear war. I could do that. I could do uh, a meteor strike. I could do, a, you know, a, a mini ice age. I'm ready for all of that. The only thing I don't know how to fight is communism. And the difference is that back in the 40s and 50s and 60s, you know, the people that lived in Eastern Europe and, and in China and, and you know, the communist-run countries, they had a slight, slim hope that if they could escape, if they could get out of the country and go to the West, that they would finally be free. But there is no such hope now. There's nowhere to run to, Sean. And if the United States goes down, which is the last place in the world, because, listen, 
I'm, I'm, I'm making plans to go back to the United States myself. I got to get out of Canada. I got to get away from uh, Fidel Castro Jr. here and uh, their, their Marxist hordes because they've gone completely nuts here. They're already building the concentration camps. They've already invited the Chinese troops over. So, uh, hey, I let me ask of- you about that before I forget. Sure. Flush that out. I've heard about those concentration camps that are being built up there. I've heard about the discovery or the exposure of documents suggesting that that is in the future for Canadians. Do you want to flush that out a little bit? What do you know about the camps? Well, first of all, many of them are already built. And, um, you know, Rebel News, I guess you know them. Um, uh, Rebel News is a Canadian alternative uh, media uh, channel. And they've already visited the camps. You know, there's the, there's the barbed wire. The barbed wire is facing inwards. That means to keep people in, not keep people out. The camps are already built. And then there was, in the budget, there was an RFP request for proposal to build what they called quarantine camps. And uh, it's in the government proposal. It's in their budget. And one member of parliament, which is Canada's version of a congressman, let's say, had stood up in, in parliament and asked, what does it mean that you're, you're asking people to, to, to bid on a contract to build, to build detention centers or quarantine centers, and they shut him down. They wouldn't answer his questions. This is a member of parliament. They wouldn't even answer those questions. So come on, they're already building it. We know it. And Listen, but that's what communists do. Even if you didn't see the camps, even if you didn't hear this guy stand up in parliament and question it, even if you didn't see the RFP requesting proposals, that's right, you got it. You got it right there on your screen share. Even if you didn't see that with your own eyes, come on, I can predict it. That's what communists do. That's what they always do. It's, it's uh, you know, it's their playbook. They always go by their playbook, which is gulags and torture centers and re-education centers. And the other thing, folks, you know, stock up on food. I think Sean's got some deals on his website for long-term storable foods. Do you not, Sean? Yeah, prepare with sgtreport.com. Yeah. Go yeah. there, get as much food as you can, because the other thing that the communists always do is starve people. It's easy for them. They just cut off the, the food chain and uh, people starve to death. And before they starve to death, they run around and murder each other for a scrap of bread. So you get a whole lot of murder and death and torture, and they don't even have to do anything. They don't even have to send out the troops to do that. So listen, this is what's coming. This is what happens under a communist regime. And the entire world is under a communist regime right now, including the United States. With the one exception is that the United States is still slightly more free. And the reason the U.S. is slightly more free is because of the Second Amendment, the only country in the world that has a Second Amendment right to bear arms. And that's why you are not... I'll be honest with you, Sean, that's why you're still walking around now. Yeah. Because they would have they would have come and rounded you up already years ago. They've already digitally assassinated me. I mean, yeah. look, I got knocked off of YouTube, both my channels. Yeah. I got knocked off of Vimeo. I got yeah. knocked off of Patreon. MailChimp terminated my account. So then at the advice of Vox Day, I tried to open an uh, email delivery account with uh, Send in Blue, And yeah. I paid 1300 bucks for that. And Whoa. the very next day, they terminated that account. So they kept your money. No, they actually refunded the money, but the point is wow. I can't reach my, my email list. I can't contact the people that yeah. you know, would be there to support me. So it's digital assassination. So I think you're right. The only thing saving the American people right now is the Second Amendment. But guess what? Joe Biden gets in. He's going to mm-hmm. come after the guns. Of and then, he you know, he's going to spark a shooting war. If they come after the guns, that is the line in the sand for the American people. Although, man, we're so peaceful that I don't even know if people would fight back then. Hey, the point I wanted to make is I uh, show the uh, hand of the queen here, Justin yeah. Trudeau, Fidel Castro Ju- Jr., yeah, Castro is, Jr. Uh, is that when you hear him speak and you're awake, it makes your skin crawl. It reminds me of this guy, and they kind of look similar, Ted Bundy. Yeah, Ted Bundy, yeah, who would yeah. use his charm to woo mm-hmm. women to get into his Volkswagen Beetle, and then he would rape and strangle them, which is exactly what the hand of the queen is going to do to Canadians if he gets his way. I've never Absolutely. seen anybody quite so psychopathic as him because he yeah. whispers sweet nothings in his little press conferences. 
right? Yeah, and 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 the Canadian people. Uh, 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 oh, you know, I, you know every time I see this man. guy come on TV, I, I I have to turn off the TV or wherever he's on. I can't stand the sight of him. I won't listen to him. I won't look at him. The guy just makes my skin crawl. Yeah, me too. Absolutely. Me too. And I don't even have to deal with him because I'm not a Canadian, but uh, yeah. you poor folks do. You, you poor folks well, do. Well, you're going to have to deal with Biden pretty soon and Kamala. <laughs> I don't think so. You know, I really don't think so because here's the thing, and we'll end on this. Okay. In my, in my view, and I've said this time and time again to my guests recently, we are at war. A war was declared on our nation, on our country, on November 3rd and on November 4th via an attempted coup, okay, a stolen election. And the people that are trying to steal the election are not just the Democrats. It includes their big tech partners and the mainstream mockingbird horror media. This is a coup, and the president knows that we are at war, which gives him war powers, and his sworn duty is to protect and defend the republic against enemies foreign and domestic. So I don't think this thing is over yet, Stefan. I really, really don't. Final word I, from you. I sure hope you're right, Sean. I, I really do. But listen, my final message to the people is that get ready. You know, um, be prepared to fight. Make, you know, it's a mental thing. You, you turn it on in your mind. You say, listen, if this happens, that's it. That's, that's the line in the sand. Then I'm going to go get my shotgun. I'm going to go get a baseball bat. I'm going to go get a, a pot of boiling water. Whatever it takes, and I'm going to fight like a son of a bitch, and I'm going to take these bastards down before they give me the shot, before they put me on the truck, before me, they send me to the COVID camps. You, you know, that whatever the line in the sand is. But listen, once they got a hold of you, um, you know, this is in my book, The Art, Art of Urban Survival. When they imprison you, the longer you stay in prison, the more difficult it is to escape. So if you have any hope of escaping, it is in the early stages of when they come to get you. Once they've got you, once you're in the camp, it's over then. So really, the line in the sand has to be there. You have to make the spiritual decision. Because listen, it's not just you and me, Sean. Think of the children. You, they aren't spared either. And we've talked about this before when we were talking about Pizzagate. You know what happens with these pedophile rings and what they do to children. What Hillary Clinton does to children. <clears throat> you want that to happen to all the kids in your neighborhood, your children, your grandchildren? That's what's going to happen to them unless you make the decision that says, and this is the line in the sand, and you cross it, and I will fight to the death. And maybe we will die, but... Uh, a good death is its own reward, right? And what better way to die than fighting for freedom, for fighting for your children, for fight and in fighting for your country? Look how many people have died already in all the senseless wars over the past 50 years. Uh, millions of people have died fighting for nothing. This way, if you die fighting, you will have died for truth and honor and the American way. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we don't want it to come to that, but it sure is starting to feel like it is coming to that. We're going to see how this all plays out on January Yeah, let's give it 6th. to uh, January and see what happens. Yeah, that's exactly what we're going to do. And guys, uh, the website to go to if you do want to stock up on storable, long-term shelf life foods, really great stuff, free shipping on anything over $100. It's preparewithsgtreport.com. Yeah, prepare with SGT report. I'm, I'm going to go and get some myself. Yeah, those are our friends over at My Patriot Supply. Great products, and again, I think it's free shipping on any order over a hundred bucks. I think the time to prepare is now for a worst case scenario. Uh, Stefan, out of all your books, what do you think is the one that people might want to read most? The most applicable to the time we live in right now. I know you've written a lot of books. Tell people how they can get them. Okay, so all my books are on Amazon. There's two books I would recommend. One is The Art of Urban Survival, and that has the defense against the psychopath. That's one chapter in that book. The Art of Urban Survival takes you through every possible threat that you would encounter in, a, in an urban setting, everything from crime to natural disasters to martial law to war. It's like a Boy Scout manual for, uh, for people that aren't you know, as wise as we are, Sean. And the second book is The Way of the Warrior, because in it I describe 
the training techniques and the moral background through which you can defend yourself. And it has stuff on how to fight and strategies and tactics. But the most important thing is on, on the, uh, the training techniques, the visualization, the breathing exercises, how to overcome fear. Um, because we need to be warriors in this. Uh, look, you can't fight back unless you have experience in combat. And you need to get that now. And you can mentally prepare by reading my books, because visualization is an excellent training tool. If you can imagine yourself doing it, you've already gone a long way to actualizing those actions, right? So um, Art of Urban Survival uh, and uh, the, the Master's Guide to the Way of the Warrior, you can find them on my website, chinastrategies.com, or you can just uh, look them up on Amazon. All right, very good. Well, Stefan, thanks for uh, coming on here on short notice. I do appreciate your time. These are uh, the times that try men's souls. Yes, they are. Yeah. yeah. All right. We're going to pray for the best and prepare for the worst. Our exactly. guest has been Stefan Verstappen. Thank you, Stefan. Thanks, John. You have a good day. Yeah, you too. And friends, thank you so much for tuning in. We very much appreciate you. A shout out to our members at sgtreport.tv and to our subscribe stars. That's Real SGT Report over on Subscribe Star. Uh, and uh, for real news, guys, I'll just remind you once again, you can always find us at sgtreport.com, the antidote to corporate propaganda. God bless. Bye-bye. So the EU itself, uh, according to a very reliable source who used to be a Satanist leader, is dominated by Satanists.